Hey friends, it's Jill here from the Hometown Homestead where we talk about all things homemade, homegrown, and homeschooled. And today our focus is going to be a new player in the homeschool math game in talking about math with confidence. Now I have currently used math with confidence for kindergarten last year, currently doing first grade, and I also have a student in the fourth grade pilot program. So I have a little bit of information for you about what it looks like for the first couple years, as well as where it's headed down the road. The first thing that I want to tell you about Math with Confidence is that it is very deep in the conceptual understanding of numbers. And another nice thing about Math with Confidence is not only is it mastery on the current skill, but it's also spiral and that there's a built-in review that the children take place in every single day during the warm-up section of the lesson, as well as a page in their workbook that they will complete at the end of the lesson. And I'll talk more about both of those a little bit later. Uh, Another thing to know is that it is really, really easy to teach because the teacher's manual itself gives very scripted things to say, um, tells you exactly what supplies you'll need at the beginning of every lesson, and the math kit itself is all things that I've collected around my house uh, or been able to easily pick up without much expense. So today let's talk about what that first grade math lesson is going to look like for you when it comes time to sit down for school. The first thing I want to go over is what the actual teacher's manual is going to look like for you, as well as some details about the student guides. The teacher's books are very thick. And as you can see here, I have a ruler in the in the spine here for my placeholder of where we are today. Uh, and that's actually part of the math kit. So one thing that you'll need is a ruler and I use it to keep track of where we are. So I'm going to give you a little insight into what our lesson looks like for our take apart subtraction day. Um, the book itself is really, really simple. It has a section up here that tells you what materials you'll need for each lesson, as well as the purpose of the lesson, the purpose of the warm up, the person of the activity, and the purpose of the workbook. So the warm up for this one specifically says to have your child count by fives to 70, which you can do this um, if they're to the level where they can do that without looking at their hundreds chart, they're welcome to do so. Or Kate supplies black line masters for us to easily print out. And then you can point to the number while they're actually going through the number. So if we're counting by fives, we do five, 10, 15, 20, and just go on down until they get to 70. Um, these do change as the, well, the warm up changes every single day. So it's going to focus on a different skill that you've already learned or something that you're working to finalize in their understanding. Um, after we did that for yesterday, you're supposed to say the days or ask them how many days there are in a week uh, and then say the days of the week, taking turns or having them go it on their own if they know, just to kind of customize it to the level of their own understanding. Um, after that, we had a section where you draw a picture for them this time it was six balloons and then you're going to take one away so you exit off so they could see. But the, the actual lesson itself was three different sets of little pictures and I will show you. She gives you that illustration in the book so you don't have to make it up or wonder what it's going to look like. And then it shows which ones are X'd off and you ask the questions and the kids are easily able um, to identify what's going on there. Um, the next one says, imagine this word problem as I read it. You have six balloons, one balloon is red, the rest are blue, how many balloons are blue? And then they, in their head, will say, you know, uh, that the answer is five. So it's kind of really simple for them to, to picture and to see what happens as a result. Then it says, discuss the picture and, e and equation with these questions. Which part of the picture matches the six in the equation? Which part of the picture matches the one? and which part of the picture matches the five in the equation to let them identify the specific parts of the picture and really make sure that they're understanding the concept that goes along with the, pro with the problem itself. It says, no one takes away any balloons in our story. Instead, we split them apart into two groups and use subtraction to find the part we don't know. And then you're to repeat it with a, a, cracker, a cracker problem as well as followed up by a popsicle word problem to help them understand the take apart. Um, after that is complete, which doesn't, doesn't take long, maybe 10 minutes or so, then there's a game in the workbook called Subtraction Climb to the Top. And my son has really, really liked this one. 
and I had him go ahead and tear it out of his workbook. And then I've just been able to use it every time as a page marker on where the directions are for the game. So it looks like this. So I have two decks of playing cards here and I got two different colors on purpose because I wanted to be able to easily sort them. So that's one tip that I would give you if you ever want to sort them back out. Having two different colors makes that process very easy. This game specifically says that you want to sort out the five, six, sevens, eights, nines, and tens. So you're going to remove your fours, twos, aces, and you just go through and sort. And I already had mine broken apart from our recent game. So you're going to have um, a pretty good chunk of cards. Of course, we, we sort them um, and shuffle them up, and then we set them down. Then my son will draw the first two cards off the deck. Eight and a six, for example, here, and he'll say eight minus six equals two. Then he gets to place a marker on the game board under the number two. Um, the goal is to be the first person, one game board being mine or one his or one with a different sibling, if you're practicing with more than one, to be the first person to reach the top of your board. Every single time, even if the problem is really, really simple, it's important to say eight minus six equals two. And that really helps to build their confidence and to get their facts into their head in a way that's easy and fun and not just drilling um, different flashcards and such that they might be more accustomed to or that might be familiar with you. So at the end of the game, that is when you would pop out the workbook and you would go to the page that they needed. And of course, we tore this one out because we just got done using it. But I'll give you a quick example of what it may look like. It's going to be something like this to have them practice their facts that they're working on. And then you're going to color in on this one. It says color in when you're counting by twos. So every time gives you a different option. One's going to say fives. Some of them are coloring different shapes. Um, there, it's just a really nice, simple workbook that's not overpowering on the page with so much graphic going on that it's hard for kids to focus. And that is something that some kids do have issue with when you get a busier workbook is having too much on the page or too much color or too bright. So it is important that the page not be overrun with something that's gonna be distracting to them instead of helping them focus on the problems at hand. And I think Math with Confidence does a really good job of, of finding the right space there to keep it interesting while not making it distracting at the same time. So what's in the math kit? This is a question that a lot of people have on their mind because there are other math programs where you can just simply click to order your math kit and have everything delivered to you in one big bundle. And I know that sounds, well, expensive was what was about to come off my tongue. Yes, it sounds expensive, but it also sounds nice because convenience is worth paying for sometimes. That said, with a math kit, it can cost several hundred dollars. And this one is really, really simple to put together. So let me show you what we have in it. We have a plastic ruler and this one was less than a dollar. I do recommend clear. Uh, this one is a little bit flimsy for my liking. I have another one that I like better, but my, my older guy's using it for his art right now. So I grabbed this one uh, to, just to show for a math kit. The other thing I have here, and I have a little zipper pouch to keep it in because it makes things a lot easier. This is the two decks of cards that I mentioned before for our game. I did go ahead and remove all of the face cards and jokers because that's not something you'll be using. You do need the aces, so keep those in because they focus or they take the place of a one in any of the games that you're playing. A clock with hands. You can just look at your clock on the wall. You don't actually have to have one of these, but we had it from a previous math kit, so I did keep it around. And then the rest of my things, I just keep in a little plastic container that I had. It's actually a vitamin organizer, and it makes it really easy to keep everything together in one place, and it's locked up really tight. I know you can see scissors through there. I have scissors uh, in there, but you don't actually need them that often. Uh, the, the things that you would need them for, like we did an activity, I'll show you this, where we were setting up a store with stuffed animals, and I had to price things at different prices, so I cut these little squares of paper and wrote on them for the correct pricing. So that would be an instance where you would need scissors just to have them close. Another thing that she says you need are counters. My favorite counters are money because you're going to need coins to talk about value anyway. And if you get a dime, which we have several in here, dimes are small enough to easily fit on every game board that you're gonna have, as well as look really good on your tin frame, which I'll talk more about in a minute. 
So money is great because it serves dual purpose. If you don't want to use real money, there is play money out there, um, or you can simply use any counters that you have. One of my favorite and expensive ways to take the place of this when we don't use money is to use beans because you can use two different colors of beans and then you're not really playing with anything of any value. So that's an option for you as well. If you want to go that route, um, you definitely can. Linking cubes are another favorite. Then we needed two dice. Uh, I personally just got a great big bundle of dice because we often use them for different things. And I keep a handful in here. One of the main reasons is because my younger girls like to just roll them and look at the numbers. And I like for them to get used to seeing them. And it's something to keep them busy while we are doing math with the brothers. Another thing that is recommended that you have is some index cards and a marker or something to write on. Now, this is where I vary a little bit. She recommends index cards um, and envelopes that you put all of your index cards that you've written on back in and have them labeled on the outside. So one would say tally marks, one would say number cards, then you have one for signs and operations. I love these. This is what I do instead. These are on a ring and they have lasted us over a year with the other set and we still use them today. And I just know what color is what, so I don't need to label them. These are our number cards. Then we have our tally mark cards. And then I have my operation signs that I pull out in orange. Um, these are, I got these off Amazon, so I'll see if I can link it down below. But these are the Kugel cards and I saw them recommended somewhere else. They actually come already punched with the rings and it makes life a lot easier. So when I need to go grab something different, I will grab a different color if it's not tally marks um, the numbers themselves or the operations. And these are also great for other applications uh, if there's specific um, numbers that you want to work on flashcard wise that you could easily make them. Or if you need something similar for a different subject, it would be great alphabet cards if you're working with little kids uh, on working on phonics as well. So those are my favorite. That's a change that I made from what she suggests, but I found that it works out really, really well for us. Another thing that you need are some sort of pattern blocks. And this was something that was used in kindergarten and first grade. And this is what we're using for fractions for fourth grade, which I honestly had no clue that these were easily used for fractions until we were in um, our last unit that we were doing. And I'm like, how in the world did I not know that? Um, so these pattern blocks have come in really handy and will be used throughout the years with math co with confidence. So I would recommend grabbing a set of those. If you don't want to grab a set of them or can't uh, at any given time or just don't have them handy, she does have pattern block uh, black line master in the back where you can cut out the shapes. It's just really hard unless you have some kind of construction paper or something that would be more sturdy. It's really nice to have that set. I mentioned black line masters earlier. She does have all of these black line masters available for you in the back of the book, or there's an online download where you can just download and print them all. I printed all of mine, and then I have a folder that I keep the ones in that we're not using. That was several different black line masters, so don't get worried that you need all those um, for first grade. And then I just pull out the couple that we're using at the time, and I use those just by sticking them in the spine of my teacher's manual and then put them back away and switch them out for the ones that might be more applicable when we change to a new topic. So right now I keep our hundreds chart because it's really nice for reference like I showed you on the counting and then I keep our double 10 frame and I also keep our part total map and this is called um, something slightly different if you're coming from Singapore. It was a part whole. I had to think I'm like what was that? Uh, but the part total mat and these two concepts, the, the 10 frame and the part total mat are very, very useful for helping the kids understand the numbers themselves. And I've been really glad to have those and it come in, comes in really, really handy, specifically the part total when we're even working on word problems because I can ask the boys, well, what do we know? Do we know the part? Do we know total? What do we know? So then we can figure out what's blank and what we need to fill in. And that's been a really great way to help them kind of organize their thoughts and see what's missing. And they know if we have the total and we don't have 
all of the parts that we're subtracting because we know the whole to begin with, or if we just have the parts that we're adding to find the whole, um, depending on where they're at. So that's a really, really useful tool. And I'm really glad that it's a focus of, of this program. The other thing that you might have noticed when I held up the 10 frame, this is a double 10 frame because it's used for the um, first grade on up. But when you're first starting, you're going to have a single row like this. And it, and it is long like this. The reason is that it's really easy when you want to see numbers beyond 10. If you just look at this and know automatically that they're at 10 when they're at the end of the first row. And if they have three down here, 10 and three is 13. Um, so the, the big, the darker line in the middle is a five mark. So the kids always know when they look at it, if this side's full, that they have five. The linear style of her double 10 frame is something that took me a minute to get it used to after coming from Singapore's double stack five. Uh, but this has been really, really nice for my younger kids to be able to just instantly see the 10 and whatever's extra going along with it. So I like this as well. I would recommend that if you wanna keep these long-term to make sure that you laminate them or just get used to the idea that you're gonna to have to copy them a couple times. We've spilled a few things on here and I do use super heavy paper on the ones that I'm gonna keep. So just something to consider as you're going along. So what does the future look like for Math with Confidence? Well, first off, the student book is gonna get a little bit of a change. The third and fourth grade students will have two separate books to accomplish during the year. That is because there's gonna be a few more pages with the kids increasing their workload. In the fourth grade, for example, we have pages that are marked with two heads, which are to be completed with the parent as part of the lesson, and then one head for the practice pages that the kids are gonna be doing on their own. This practice page is going to review exactly the skills that you have worked on in the lesson with your children for that day. After that, there's going to be a review page and it reviews previously learned concepts. So this, this one specifically, we were reviewing addition and subtraction of fractions um, and then different just addition, subtraction, multi digits, as well as parentheses uh, and order of operations down below. One thing that I will tell you is that previous to Math with Confidence, my son was really reluctant to do worksheets on his own without me close. And after our start in August, he's now willing to go on his own with these worksheets every day. Uh, I will say that that's been a huge, huge help to us and something that I went over in detail on our previous math journey video, where I talked about the differences in our studies with Singapore dimensions as well as primary 2022. And if you haven't checked that video out and are curious how all three line up for our house, definitely make sure to check the homeschool playlist and you'll be able to see that as well. Before we end today, I want to cover one other topic about math with confidence. It is not common core aligned. And I know many are against new math and say that they don't want any part of teaching this new math. But I find that what they mean when they say that is that they're against conceptual math. Math with confidence is very conceptual. It teaches kids how to understand math. It teaches them to be experts at mental math. My son is nine years old and he can do mental math in the grocery store on the fly. Um, he can multiply things really easily, subtract things very easily, and he doesn't ask for pencil and paper to do so. He can manipulate the numbers really, really easily. And I really attribute that to our time that we've spent with math with confidence and the focus on the mental math skills. That being said, it is not common core aligned. And the reason or the main difference that I found between it and the other two programs that we did previously, which were common core aligned, is that we haven't been asked to tell stories about pictures that we're seeing in the book. So in our Singapore, for example, there would be a picture of kids playing on a swing and there would be, you know, five kids you could tell were coming in and two kids were on the swings and, and they would be asked to tell a story something along the lines of five kids are running to the park, two kids are on the swing, there's now a total of seven kids. Or they would say two kids are swinging, five kids come to join them, whatever. They just needed to make up a story. We haven't been making up stories to go along with our word problems. That isn't lessening their comprehension or understanding at all, but it is something that is somehow a part of the common core standards that is not involved in math with confidence. 
So while Math with Confidence is not a common Coraline program, if you're looking for old standard algorithms only, you're not going to find that here because there is a focus on that conceptual understanding. That said, those old algorithms are not missing from this program either. The kids will actually learn both. They're going to learn how to process the numbers conceptually before they, before they really focus on that standard algorithm. So with that being said, if you have any additional questions about Math with Confidence or any details about where the future might go, or you're just in doubt about which programs are going to be right for you, definitely leave a comment here or the other videos that I have in my playlist that deal with math specifically. And if you want to know more about if you should or shouldn't be interested in a Common Coraline program, definitely make sure to check out that video as well. So from my house to yours, thank you for stopping by and we'll see you again soon.